In the previous lecture, we completed the first step, which is design. In this lecture, we go on to the second step, which is to animate all the layers. Let's start. Shape layer one, let's rename it. To rename a layer, just select the layer over here, press enter, and it's highlighted, ready to be renamed. Let's call it background. To commit, you press enter, or you could have clicked outside. Now I have here web design, motion graphics, and graphic design. These are gonna have the same kind of animation. I would like to animate the scale and the opacity at the same time. You know, you can twirl down and twirl down the transform and stories like this. That's cool. But there is a shortcut here. I will select the three layers. And to bring up the scale, I press S. You see how the scale has been brought in. If I wanted position, I will press P. If I wanted opacity, I'll press T. If I want the rotation, it's R. But I want the scale and also I want the opacity. To get the scale and the opacity, I press Shift T. Here you are. Cool. So I have scale and opacity ready to be animated. Of course, I could animate the scale and the opacity for each layer at a time. Or, better yet, I can animate all the layers for the scale or opacity. Fine. Let's try this. I will go after one second. I will click on the stopwatch to initiate the animation for scale. Well, now that's what happened. By clicking on the stopwatch, I initiated the animation for scale for all the layers because they are selected. So you have the keyframes on each layer. Then I will do the same for opacity. Cool, we're really cutting time to animate. Of course, the scale is gonna be animated from the anchor point. Okay, guys? Now the anchor point here position is okay for me. If it's not okay for you, Go back to the paragraph and try to put it left align. Maybe I forgot to mention this in the beginning. Let's return the scale to 100, first of all, without making mistakes. And then let's go back in time to 0, 0 and make the scale 0. Here you are. And then make the opacity also 0. That's what happened now. You animated the three layers in the same animation at the same time, not one after the other. It really simplifies the work. Here you are. Okay, I'll play it. Fine, not bad, bit slow. Take care of it later. Now notice that every time is gonna go to five seconds. I have to wait three, four seconds, just waiting for it to go to the end. And I want that, I want to speed up. So I want just to stop at two seconds. It means I want to reduce my work area to two seconds. This bar here is your work area. Okay, guys, so you have work area and you notice work area and notice the mouse pointer. And at the beginning, you have work area start. Fine. I can take the work area and and drag it towards the timeline indicator. But there is better. I can just press N. N will bring the work area and to the timeline indicator. We are going to use this very many times. Now, if I press the space bar to play, Okay, it plays until two, it goes back. Pretty nice. Fine, let's animate now the rectangle. I will pick the selection tool, open the background. So I want to animate it through position. Press P, it will bring the position. Let's go to the last keyframe. So you can use the navigator here, that's fine. But we have two very nice shortcuts. The K will take you to the next visible keyframe, the one that you can see over here. J will take you to the previous visible keyframe. So K will go to the next visible keyframe and I will keyframe the position just over here. Fine, I'll go back and take the layer. Now I'm not gonna use the numbers like before, click on the layer and drag it out. But you know, it's going up and down with me. To make it go in a straight line, I just press shift and drag it. So notice how I have done this. First, I click on it. The mouse pointer will turn black. I don't know if you can see it through the recording. Then I move a bit, just a bit, then press shift, and then it goes straight. So it doesn't move up and down, just straight line here using the modifier key shift. Let's play our animation. Not bad, not bad. But the speed really, guys, the speed is not very good. But this is exactly the animation we want. It's very slow. So let's reduce the speed. It makes sense that when you want to speed the animation, you make sure you 
get the keyframes near each other. Now, in between keyframes, there is only 10 frames. And of course, the animation of web design, notice web design, is going to be pretty fast according to the scale. Here you are, notice? Cool. So let's undo this and select all the keyframes here. Let's stop the animation and drag them towards, for example, 15 frames. If I don't know where 15 frames is, so I can just play with the time indicator or simply go over here and write 15 is 15 frames. Oops, it jumps to the 15 frames here. Then I can drag my keyframes, the selected one, press shift and it will snap to the timeline indicator. Very convenient. Here you are. Fine. Beautiful. So in the next lecture, we are going to move to the next step, which is the last step that is sequencing and timing our layers to make the animation a bit more beautiful and dynamic. I'll see you then.